What's up guys? Today we are going to start uh, actually building the new addition. Um, so I'm going to take you through our first couple of steps and getting stuff set up so that you have kind of success through the whole build. So uh, one of the first things is uh, a flat, flat mason's disc on the grinder and we're going to take that and um, kind of level out the foundation. So from where that was just floated, there's a couple high spots and stuff, and then there's a bunch of sloppy stuff from where they poured the floor. So we're gonna get um, all that stuff ground off nice, and then uh, we'll get out the layout station and we'll get everything squared up. Once it's all squared up, then we'll go ahead and set our sill plates which will take you through that process and then we have a big ledger to hang and then we can start cutting our our tjis so um our floor load and some of our wall load is behind us the rest of the wall load is coming on wednesday and i think the roof load is coming maybe thursday or friday so we've got our lumber kind of spaced out throughout the week so that hopefully we have some room to work and uh, we'll see how it goes so um, one trick that I saw for uh, evening out the foundation after it's poured is like the day after when the concrete's still really green, you can take a cinder block and you can run a cinder block on it and it'll kind of take out all the highs um, and kind of like sand the foundation, if you will. But uh, just didn't work for me on this one. So uh, now that we're actually like the concrete's been in the ground, probably for about a week, week and a half, so it's not as green as it was. Uh, cinder block won't work, so I've just got that flat disc or whatever, and we're gonna get it all nice and even. So here we go. So it'll probably be a little hard to pick up on video, but uh, there's some minor highs and lows um, throughout the whole foundation. So taking the flat disc to it uh, really does a nice job. So I've got that wall and that wall done. Just need to finish this one up. So that's after running the wheel. I uh, just kind of evening everything out and then uh, taking the air hose to it. So, turns it into ice cream. Looks nice. So next up, Adam is cleaning off the rest of the foundation and I'm going to get the layout station set up. So uh, what we're gonna do is there's a laser that comes out of here. We'll see if we can, there we go. So you can see that guy over on the corner of the foundation. So we'll get that guy pretty close. And then what we're gonna do is take our receiver that makes lots of noise. And we'll come down here. We're going to shield it from the laser so that the laser can't see it. And we're going to hit this little button over here. Gonna wait until it does a couple of little blinkies. And then we're gonna take the triangle and we're gonna put that uh, right about the same that the laser is off of the unit down there. So uh, I've got the laser on that corner set about maybe a quarter inch back on the foundation. So we're gonna do the same thing with this guy, set it about a quarter of an inch back. And down at this end, the layout station will start looking for the laser so you can see the dial spinning so what's that that's going to do is that's going to take this beam this vertical beam and it's going to rotate it out until it gets locked on with that which it just locked on to so there's that now we can take this guy and we can roll over to the inside corner over here Now we can find exactly where we need to be. So there it is. 
So that's how the layout station works. So what we'll do is we'll get a couple marks going. We'll mark the foundation there, there, and there. And then we're gonna take the layout station from here and put it on the mark down there. And then we'll use the layout station to get uh, from this point back squared up to that side. And that'll get us perfectly square here. And we'll snap a couple lines. We're going to run uh, some sealant, some foam, some sealant, and a two by six. And then we can set our sill. So as per usual, our uh, concrete guy did pretty good. So we've got, uh, I started with this guy about a quarter inch in uh, from either side. That was our first point with the layout station. Uh, as you can see, our line is right on the edge. We just barely hang on here and we're pretty much right on the edge here. So there's a couple little waves in the wall, but it's pretty straight. Uh, I'd say this one was maybe a quarter inch out of square in total. Uh, this one runs really nice too, about a quarter inch. The whole way gets a little tight here, a uh, quarter inch again, maybe a little bit more than a quarter, and then back to a quarter out here. So this wall is pretty nice, and this one is also pretty straight. So we could have almost just thrown our sill plate and just held it flush to the outside of the wall here, but um, I own the layout station, so you might as well use it. So pull that guy out for all of five minutes, but uh, this is perfectly square now. So the only one that I have no control over is the back wall, but we'll keep these three as square as possible and we'll just lose any of the not squareness along the back. Uh, we can measure each individual floor joist so that if there is any fluctuation in that wall in and out, um, we keep this outside wall nice and straight. So uh, next up, we're gonna get the sill plate rolling. So we'll talk about that next. So getting started with the sill plate, uh, we're gonna hold it on our line here. We're gonna go along and if you take your square and bump it to either side, you can get your marks. And then if you measure with your tape measure from this line to the center of this bolt, you can transfer that from the edge of the board back and make a mark. We're gonna drill these a little big anyway. Um, so there'll be a little bit of slop in the hole and then we can move the board where we need to uh, to get it right on with the line. So. Uh, we've got 28 feet, one inch to go from that one to that one. Luckily, 14 foot lumber is usually a little long. So we've got 14 foot one. We're going to cut that one at 14 foot zero and we will be done with the long wall. And then we'll measure back to the foundation on either side. So this process, we've got some crazy sealant that'll work like underwater. Uh, we're going to put a bead of that down, and then we're going to stick our, uh, like, dowel, I believe, makes this foam uh, on top of that. And then we'll run another bead of sealant on top of this. So this will be sandwiched between a couple different beads of sealant, and then we'll cinch everything down with the 2x6 so that we've got... Um, you know, more of like an adhesion between this foam and the concrete and this foam and the sill plate. Stick her up. Maybe all over the gun. One of those, one of those kind of cuts. A lot of people think just this is good enough, which I'm sure for the last 50 years it was but uh, they've also got like a fiberglass version of this that, no thanks. Um, but yeah, this is, this is how we do it. All right, so the nice part about putting the, uh, the sealant in on top of the foundation, we put two beads and then we uh, basically circled around our, our bolts here and connected them. So. Uh, the nice part is on a slightly breezy day like today, it uh, does a really nice job keeping your sill seal from flying away. So uh, we're going to do the same thing. It's really hard to see on this, but two lines with uh, 
some lines connecting around our anchor bolt and we will set our sill plates. So we're probably like two feet away and maybe three feet or four feet away on the uh, bolts. So we just use the ram set quick and put a couple of um, concrete nails in here to keep this guy from moving around. And then we plaster that joint full of uh, sealant as well. So we're gonna do the same thing for that guy and that guy and our sill plates will be installed. So with the uh, double, double sealant sill seal detail, um, the anchor bolts are like six feet on center. So I am just taking Mr. Ram set and popping one of these in in between each anchor bolt so that we're like closer to like 30 inches or three feet on center uh, just to make sure we get good compression on all of that sealant and sill seal and hopefully this will keep plenty of bugs out of the house. So next up we need to hang a ledger board from the foundation there across to the foundation here and go into the rim board the old foundation. Uh, we got this all cleared by an engineer. So what we're gonna do is we have to stay two inches outside or two inches inside the very outside of this board. Uh, that's the no-no square. And then we need to put two rows, 12 inches on center staggered. So we're gonna do two out here and then we're gonna go back and forth. So we're gonna go low, high, low, high, low, high all the way down. So uh, we found those two marks um, because we also, you guys won't be able to tell, there's a lot of crap here. Um, but behind all of this, we have, well, you can kind of see here, another rim board. And we also have to stay uh, two inches in from the top and bottom of this rim board. So it gives us a pretty narrow window. And as you can see, our black foundation here is actually just a little bit taller than uh, the new foundation. So that's why it gets a little goofy. So all of our um, big lags are gonna be right through here. So we're gonna get these two LVLs hung and then we can start working on joists. So we're using uh, a 5 by five or five and an eighth, maybe I don't remember. Five sixteenths by five and an eighth uh, GRKs for these. Um, like I said, we had an engineer spec them out for us. She told us she wanted um, a foot on center and an alternating staggered pattern. So that's what we got going on. And if you guys aren't using a Gen, Gen 3 Milwaukee for this, I don't know what you're using, but it's not the right one. All right, so we're gonna kind of backtrack. We're into our second day, but I'm gonna kill that video there. Um, so that is how we deal with the foundation prep, uh, setting the sill plate and getting the ledger in the air. Uh, the next video, we're gonna talk about um, marking and setting the floor joists, hanging the floor joists with the metal connectors and uh, then we'll probably go into a third video about uh, actually how we do the, the deck itself. So we're going to break it up a little bit to keep the videos a little shorter. I know we're already like 12 or 13 minutes in. So that's where we're going to end this one here. Uh, should have the rim board and eye joist video coming out next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.